And good evening on a nice lazy Thursday evening, at least in the UK. I hope everyone's doing well. And welcome back to this third part of the tutorial on the Wells Class Science Ship and also on my Federation Science Tomb. Now, just to recap, in video one we discussed the items I use on my ship, on the Wells Class. In part two we discuss the bridge officers and duty officers and now in the third part we'll discuss my character's actual build so that you can get an appreciation of how I built her the way I did. So um, let's, without further ado, um, let's get started on our um, skills. Now my character is a Betazoid and for those that aren't aware, the Betazoid cho choice on here, the Space traits, it has a trait pool and some other abilities that come with it. The character is standard. And to start with, I've got the space trait of astrophysicist, which is an innate skill and for space abilities. And it gives you a plus 10 to your starship sensors, a plus 10 to your starship flow capacitors, and a plus 10 to your starship particle generators, which we'll go into a little bit later. But um, just like I mentioned that here. And the other points that the uh, base of required traits are one of the ground abilities is that they're empathic and that means um, they basically get uh, two target basically a plus 0.05 health regeneration and a minus you know, a reduction in their threat generation as well so um, if you're a medic and you don't want to gather too much attention then this is quite useful. The other ability the base sides get is a telepathic one it's also a ground trait which improves your ability to see stealth foes, so quite useful. So basically it's a plus 10 perception, a plus 1.5% exposed chance, and a plus 1 second exposed duration, so quite a little useful little ability there. And I'll go on to some of the other passive bits and skills that this team gets, but just to start with just a new look what this character is. Now moving on to the skills. Now we'll start with the tactical system skills and we'll work on for there. Now this character uh, at lieutenant level doesn't really use any starship attack patterns skills unlike my engineer, so on this occasion I didn't spend any points in there in this, in this regard. Now in the starship weapon training my character has a full six skill points. Um, this is to get me a pretty average, pretty decent amount of damage. Um, basically, this basically this proves your starship weapon damage and, and your projectile weapon damage as well. Now, in the Lieutenant Commander skill tree uh, for tactical systems, I've got a full six points in starship energy weapon damage, so I'm getting decent damage out of my beam rays that I use on the ship. And in my projectile weapons, because of the way the points work in skills, I've not got quite the full six, but I've got. Uh, five points in the projectile weapon so that my damage, torpedoes do some pretty decent damage. The way my skill structure worked, I kind of lost out there, but I couldn't quite put six in there. But um, five's good enough; it's doing its job. Now, in the commander tree, I've got a full six points in starship maneuvers, so it's basically improving my starship's defense value, so it's making me harder to hit. And I've also got a full six points in the starship targeting system as well so that especially when I'm using abilities like substance and targeting uh, I'm also hitting my target more but I'm also getting an accuracy bonus here so the more accuracy you get the better you're going to get crits out of your weapons when they hit. Now at the captain level I'm not using Starship Stealth and I'm not using Starship Threat Control that makes no sense for science too to be perfectly honest unless you maybe use a cloak device or defiance but I think most science teams we fly in science ships, although well, saying that, I've seen science captains be very vicious in escorts, especially in defiance for some reason. Now, in the Admiral skill tree, I've got this is where I've had to make some sacrifices to, to stretch my skills out, so it may not be ideal, but I've got the full three points in energy weapon specialization and weapon specialization, so basically, I'm getting more crits, uh, critical hits, and severity with my 
energy weapons and better critical hits and severities out of my projectiles. This isn't ideal for a lot for escorts, for example, tap captains and even engineers to some respects, but this is a science character, so as such, your primary offensive capacity is actually your science skills. You're going to be using those much more effectively than you would normal aggressive tactics. So Although maybe not ideal, I'm quite happy with this and it works very well. I've not had any complaints, I'm doing some decent damage. So um, yeah, three points in those. So moving on to the engineering skills. I don't have any skill points in driver coil. Um, I am using the Borg engines on this ship and I decided that that's good enough for speed and set to space. I don't need to put any points in driver coil. Now in Starship Batteries, under the left hand skill tree, I've got three points in Starship Batteries. Now this is somewhere that you might want to improve upon in your own build, and you might actually want to put six points in this. I decided for three, and that for me works fine for this particular build, bearing in mind that I'm using auxiliary batteries, I'm using my enhanced plasma manifold, and I've got emergency power to auxiliary. So, for me, three points has been more than enough to compensate. I can pretty much keep my auxiliary systems at 125 without too much trouble whatsoever. Now, Starship Hull Repair is one of those ones you want as an engineer or as a science officer, or even as a tactical, really. It basically improves your Starship healing ability. So, the more points you can get in here, the better your heals are going to be. Now, if I was a dedicated full healer of this character, I probably would actually have nine in here. But I've gone for six, which makes me a pretty average good healer. I'm going to be throwing out some decent heals with Hazard Emitters and the Engineering Team, for example. So that's good enough for this particular build. But if you're a dedicated healer, you might actually want to consider putting the full six in here. Or even if you're just a tank, I'll say in one of my previous other videos, and you may want to actually put the full nine in here. But six is working more than enough for me. And it also is something to note is it also improves your passive hull regeneration rates as well. So the more points you get in here, the better your passive regeneration for heal will be as well. Now in the Lieutenant Commander tree, I've got the full six points in structure integrity. As you know, that improves your starship's hull strength, so it basically gives you more hit points. Now on this ship, I actually sacrifice starship subsystem repair. Um, as a science tune, I've got some pretty good resistances and it's very rare for my systems to go offline um, even when I'm against Tholians or seem to favour targeting subsystem targeting or even the erosion. Um, so I found that on this particular build that's not been necessary. Now I've also got full six points in Starship Warp Core Approach Efficiency. For those that don't know, the skill weight improves all your ship's power levels, so weapon shields, engines, and auxiliary, and um, basically you get a bonus when your power levels in that system are low. So um, if you've got the energy levels set above 75, so if the power levels above 75 like here I'm 100, I get no bonus. And even here I'm not I'm getting little or no bonus here. But my engines and my shields, because they're under the 75 mark, I'm getting a bonus to their value, so quite useful. And ideally you want to squeeze as much of a bonus out of your system. Especially for example if you're an escort and you might have your auxiliary set to minimal and just use energy batteries. If you've got a decent enough bonus going into those skills, then you're actually going to get a bonus, the lower you've got your auxiliary, the greater the bonus. Now in the commander skill tree, I've got three points of starship electroplasma systems, so basically this improves the rate of power regenerates or transfers from one system to another. Now I found in this particular build that three has been more than enough, but if you were using beam overload a lot, and I tend to use beam overload selectively, then you might actually want to consider six points in this, or even maybe putting an EPS transfer console in, um, which got your bonus to your EPS system. So it's something to bear in mind that for different builds, depending on what you're up to. Then there's the Sasha Pimpulse thrusters, which basically improves your speed and turn rate. And as a science vessel, although this one can broadside, it's not a heavy broadside. And obviously my main offensive abilities are actually coming from my deflector array because I'm using things like Titan's Rift and Gravity Well. So as such, I'm going to want to be able to turn the ship as quickly as possible to utilize the um, deflector abilities. So six points in here for me, and that's proven more effective in this ship. Although most science vessels have pretty decent turn rates. so. Um, but it's always useful to have that little bit of an X edge, and it also means you don't have to use an RCS console as well. Now, Warp Core 
bonus, uh, what well, potential, I'm actually using full 9 points in this. Uh, basically it's going to answer a flat bonus to all your power levels, to, to weapons, shields and auxiliary. Now I decided to max this out, which I've done on, my other, on one of my other teams for example. So this one's getting as much power or bang for buck as I can out of my warp core. Now moving on to the captain side of engineering systems. My engine performance is running a full 6 and this gives me a bonus to my engine power. Now on my science ships I tend to favour using auxiliary and weapon power and my shields and my engines tend to be a lot lower. Now I'm using resilient shields, the fleet ones as you know in my previous videos, so my shields regenerate pretty quickly. But I've also got emergency power shields, I've got transfer shield strength, I even have the enhanced plasma manifold that boosts my shield power levels. So it means my shields are going to regenerate pretty quickly. So I don't have any problems with my having my shields set a little bit lower. And I've also got to put steps into place. So for example, I've also got the um, shield emitter amplifier that's also giving me a bonus to my shield regeneration rate, so a plus 14.1%. So currently my resilient shields are looking at 286.7 shield regeneration every 6 seconds. So that's a pretty good regeneration rate for my shields, they're going to come up pretty quickly. Now moving on, as I digress. So, there it was, right. so yeah, engine performance, so both my engines, shield performance, running a full six points in there and um, also my starship hull plating I'm running a full six points as well so this is basically for hull plating this gives you resistance to energy weapons so I'm getting the sort of best value for money out of my hull since most of the time you're going to be up against beam or F weapons even the Borg with their plasma arrays or any type of plasma damage for example if you're in heavy STFs you're going to want a pretty decent high rating in here so I'm running a full six points and also in my shield system as well. I'm getting a flat bonus by having more points in here. So it means I'm running a pretty decent power level. So even at a low power level, I'm still getting a pretty decent value on my shields. Now on the Admiral side of things in the engineering systems, the way my build work, unfortunately I couldn't um, put a full six points into armor reinforcements. And I have considered dropping um, three points maybe from weapon performance to put them in armour, but I don't tend to be doing too bad at the moment, bearing in mind that I can run polarised hull, I am considering swapping my engineering abilities over a little bit and using the most structural integrity which would also give me a pretty decent resistance stacked up, so at the moment I'm using three in here which are actually giving me some pretty decent results, I'm holding up pretty well against talking to heads, so not doing too bad there on a particular build. Now auxiliary power, though, performance, I've got a full 6 in here as a science officer, I'm relying on my auxiliary performance the most, and uh, basically this skill grants you a flat bonus to auxiliary power level. Now, at the moment that basically equates to that well, 65 my auxiliary power of the current set item of equipment I'm using, basically means I'm running 100 on my auxiliary before buffs, so that's, given, that's a pretty good figure to start off with. And then weapon bonus, because I tend to run my weapons a little bit lower and I want as much value for money out of my weapon performance, I've actually got 6 points in here, so it equates to about 70, I get 93 out of my weapons, so that's pretty good figures really. I'm a science ship, I'm mainly using my science abilities rather than my offensive abilities. Um, I mean ideally what you might want to do is then obviously transfer more power into your weapons for example and then have the auxiliary a little bit lower and rely even more heavily on batteries etc but this works pretty well remember you're, right. you're not there to do the heavy DPS leave that to the escorts you're there to do crowd control and heal up so um, worth bearing that in mind now onto the science and operations side of things now I've got the full 9 points in flow capacitors the reason is that this basically this still improves your Starship shields and energy drain abilities. So the better the um, values in here, the better your tachyon beam, energy siphon, charge particle bursts, and your target subsystems are going to improve. Um, it basically the skill improves the magnitude at which subsystem drain happens. It uh, doesn't disable um, the duration or affect that, but it affects the drain. So the more points you got in that, the better. And it also means that if you use any of the targeting subsystems with a combination of, say, Tycoon's Rift, 
that basically takes, reduces um, 6.1 or current power levels per second, just on the current power levels on the auxiliary, then you're getting a pretty, pr pretty decent drain on, on any vessel's um, systems. Now shield emitters I've gone for six. Um, this ability basically improves your shield healing abilities. I've gone for six because this character is not a dedicated healer. Um, this character is kind of a jack of all trades in science, so she's not a generalist, but well, she's not a specialist, but she's more a generalist. But six points is made pretty, pretty good at healing shields, quite effective, not just her own, but other people's as well. Now in the Lieutenant Commander skills tree, I've got a full six points in power insulators. So this basically grants you resistance to attacks that drain your shield strength or power from any of your subsystems. And as a science vessel, if you're having your auxiliary drain, that's not good because you're not going to be very combat effective. This is going to be, well, basically through the basement. So you're going to want at least, well, minimal really three, but I only want six or nine, depending. If you're a heavy tank, you're probably going to want nine. Um, just for good effectiveness, I've gone for six, and I also get a bonus because I'm using some of the Borg set. The Mako set actually gives you a better bonus to power insulators, so something to bear in mind. The Starship um, Shield Systems, this basically improves your um, shield strength, so basically this is your hit points and your shields. So the greater the value here, the better, or the more shield ability you're going to have, the more hit points and your shields you take. Now I've gone for six, some people if they're a dedicated tank might be go to 9, I opted for 6 and by using resilient shield rays, currently I'm getting 13191 out of my shields out of resilience, so nothing to be ashamed of, that's actually a pretty good amount of hit points in my shield, so it means I can pretty much, I can shield tank but I can't hold tank, so once you have got my shields down on this ship then it's a little bit more of a worry, so I'm constantly cycling the cycling abilities over, cycling and rotating the ship around, so that all my shields take an equal amount of damage, but I'm also retrospectively distributing my shield power throughout, so I'm keeping my shields as balanced as possible. So always something worth bearing in mind then. Now, Graviton Generators, I'm using full six points in this. This includes things like Tractor Beam, Repulsor Beam, the Tunnel Shock Wave. This basically improves your Starship's not repel and slow abilities. So Graviton Generators is something most or pretty much every single science officer is going to use in some shape or form. And the Borg sets, the Borg space sets give some pretty decent Graviton ability, especially the deflector. So six in this plus some equipment give me some pretty good figures. Now in the Starship Particle Generators, so this improves damage that use exotic particles to attack their foes. So things like Feedback Pulse, Titan's Rift, Photonic Shockwave, Gravity Well, Jet Warp Plasma, Vent Theta Radiation for example. These abilities are quite useful again. Now the way I spec my build around, I only had um, 3 points in this which still gives me a pretty decent figure. So it means my Gravity Wells are pretty good my, and my Titan's Rifts are going to be pretty effective. And also I get a bonus in these with some of the set items I use as well. So maybe not ideal but certainly better. Um, so for example I could have taken some power from Decompiler for example and maybe use those points in particle generator. But saying that I can boost that with the new science consoles that popping up with the Romulan uh, embassies. Some of these new consoles are getting some pretty good figures for science ability so I may be investing soon in one of those consoles to improve my particle generators for example just get a bit more bang for buck out of Gravity Well for example. Now, in Starship Inertial Dampeners, and this is basically the skill that grants your ship resistance to hold and disables, repels, etc. I've gone for the full six points again in this because I want my ship to be affected as little as possible. So I went for six points in that regard. Now, in Starship Sensors, I've actually not put any points uh, into this one as I basically is a passive ability to pick up stealth ships. Now, you couldn't put points into this or you can enhance it like the Gemini space set for example one of the bonuses you get from one of those set items is the ability to pick up stealth ships and I think the Romulan uh, space sets are even or the Romulan one also gives you a bonus to picking up stealth vessels as well but I found it's not particularly useful for this particular build so I didn't put anything into it. I've not put any abilities into Confuse or Plus 8 
Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't actually use scramble sensors or jam sensors very much at all. It's non-mobility I favour, so as such I don't use it. Phew, first me, bad sneeze. Right then, and then last but not least in the science and operations side of things, I've actually got three points of subspace decompiler. Now the reason I put some points in here is it basically improves the duration of your disabled abilities, and I have been known to use some disabling abilities. So, like tri cobalt devices, the magnetic overload, graviton pulse, machine seat torpedoes. I do time from time use the subspace decompiler, and it's surprising what abilities actually use it, such as the photonic shockwave. So, I've put just a fumble three points in here just to make them effective. So, basically, I'm running holds and disables quite important within my build in a way. So that's the space abilities, let's move on to the ground abilities. Now my character is a okay medic, medic, so as such she does use medical abilities relatively a lot, especially in the team role. So nanite health monitor, vascular regeneration, triage, medical tricorder, scientific aptitude, etc. All those abilities. I've gone for three points into the medic field. Now I wanted my character to be effective on the ground, I wanted her to be able to at least hold a rifle and be able to hold her own pretty respectfully against tacticals and engineers. And I designed to go for the full six points in weapon proficiency, so she can pretty much handle a weapon very well, and it's not uncommon to see her wielding not just an anti-proton rifle, but you'll actually quite commonly see her wielding uh, a Mark 12 uh, disruptor pulse wave, so she's quite mean with a shotgun, so don't get in front of her too often with a shotgun, if she's annoyed you might regret it. Now, in physiology, which basically improves things like metanozone, dryozone, if I can pronounce the words today, and biofield to sleep, I use these quite a bit, and I also want these abilities to train my bridge officers, so I went for the full six points in this one. And the personal shield generator, now this was a decision either I could increase her armour or I can increase her personal shield generators. What I decided to do is I decided to give her pretty decent hit points in the shields and give her relatively decentish armour. So hence I put a full six points in the personal shield generator. Now this character actually uses the fleet elite weapon, uh, fleet elite shields and armour on herself. So with those equipment in mind I mean she gets a pretty decent defence from her shields. Now I use um, dampening field and tricorder scan and anesthetine gas quite a bit. Um, I couldn't quite put a full six in here, but I decided to put a full three points into scientist. And then I don't use anything threat control, it's not viable for me. And then into the probability logistics. Now basically this skill improves your ground science abilities that control your enemies. So it's, it basically it will um, it's really improve things like uh, ground science abilities that apply hold or to save or root, to slow or confuse, etc. And as such, things like anesthetine gas, stasis field, neural neutral, neural neutral neutralizer, sonic pulse, tachyon harmonics, some of those I use quite a bit, so I decided to go for a full six points in that to make it quite effective on the ground. Now, willpower, I always like to try and have a little bit of willpower on my characters to so that they're affected less by holds and stuns and disables and knockbacks. So, although not ideal, it just means that she's not going to get interrupted quite so much when using her abilities. Now, at the Admiral level, I wish I could have got a little bit more in points, but on this occasion I've only got three points, but it's still a pretty decent armour ability. So, this is basically you improves your ground armour. And what I did was, I've done a bit more in specific in shield regeneration. I'm hoping to keep my shields up more than I have to worry about if the shields going down. But this character does very well when the shields do drop and throw on a personal shield generator. Um, but she does quite well, so she can take a bit of damage as well. And that's kind of the reason I use a disrupt the pulse wave as one of her weapons. Because if I need to blast a target away from her, I can use the pulse wave, then back up a bit to get a bit of distance or to find a brief bit of cover, and it means my shields are going to regenerate a bit quicker. Hmm? And then last but by no means least, I'm using the particle physics, and this skill basically improves your ground science abilities that cause direct damage to a target or the target's shield. So things like um, hyperonic radiation, tachyon harmonics that I use a lot, or even sonic pulse. And what I did was because these obviously the skills by the time you get to everyone are quite expensive, I put a three points in particle physics. And what that does is in general, just in specific, 
This has given me a character that's pretty well rounded for a science officer, and she can pretty much deal, heal, or she can use her abilities basically to heal or to attack pretty respectfully. So she holds her own relatively well, I'd say. I don't have too many problems, I certainly don't get any complaints. Now, I just thought I probably ought to mention her equipment, and this is just one of the atypical loadouts she might use. Um, but um, shield wise, she's actually using the Fleet Personal Shield Mark 12, and that's Cap 3 with Reg SH, which is basically 364.8 maximum shield capacity. It will fully regenerate after not taking damage for 3 seconds, but it's also, if you notice there, got a plus 2 shield regeneration every 1 second. So when I break combat, or at least break field of view, my shields regenerate much, much quicker. And this is a common shield that I have on most of my teams, although my tactical is something slightly different. Now the armour on this occasion is the Polyweave. Again, this is from your fleet shop if you've got yourself up your tiers. And this is the Mark 12 with Res Orb times 2 and Reg SH on this character. So basically that means 11.6 damage resistance rating. 116.3 physical resistance, 116.3 kinetic. I then get a plus 43.6 or energy damage resistance rating. I also, thanks to the SH, get a plus 7.6 shield regeneration every 4 seconds. So you can see what I mean by my character shields regenerating much quicker once they break line of sight and not getting hit by anything. Their shields are going to regenerate quicker. I've also got a plus 29.1 physical damage resistance rating again, and a plus 29.1 kinetic damage resistance as well. And last but all means least, and gain additionally on that is another plus 11.6 all damage resistance rating as well. And what I'll do is I'll dock with our fleet star base shortly, and you can see what sort of resistances I get. These are just the base figures before I've actually hit the ground. Um, but to uh, summarise the space abilities. Well, you can just scroll down there. You can see that the character is fairly well rounded in what abilities she has. Obviously, certain key abilities give me some decent sen abilities as well. I've got a little moan at last moment there to sensors, even though I've not spent anything in it. You can see the figures are pretty decent, well rounded, so I'm getting some very well rounded abilities in space. So, um, that's pretty much my build. Um, what I'll do is I'll dock with our Starbase, which is a Tier 3, I believe we're at now. Uh, fleet level 10. You can see our fleet is the Alliance Central Command. This is the fleet I belong to. You can see we're working our way slowly through to the Tier 3's parts here. So, we've already got our military, we're halfway on the engineering, and we're halfway now on our science as well. So, we're getting there slowly but surely. So, let's dock up. So, we'll just wait for the old loading screen to load up. Loading and loading. Ah, you have to love a loading screen. There we go. Uh, let's just move the character somewhere a little bit so we can have a little look around. For those of you that might know, there's a little, we used to be a little bug where you could actually slip through here and go into see the parts of the map you couldn't see. Unfortunately, you can't anymore, so it was quite nice when you could. And our fleet actually managed to do the Christmas special, so we managed to get the 2012 celebration in our Starbase. But um, I slightly digress, let's bring up the old abilities here. And we'll have a look at the ground. So now I'm on the ground, you can sort of see the figures I'm getting, or at least on the Starbase, the yeah, skills are kicking in. And as you can see, pretty decent health regeneration rate, shields are running at 468. Crit chance of 2.5%, critical severity 50%, and most stossy staff detection rating. But my resistances now for damage from the fleet armor and shields are pretty good. I mean, you're looking at physical and kinetic resistance at 61%. You've got standard phaser and tetra components so that are all within the 44s, so pretty high up. But another little bonus is because it's all resistant damage resistance, I also now get a bet into electrical resist. To radiation, toxic, and fire resistance, cold resistance, and even psionic, and getting some protection from. So that's always something to bear in mind that's really, really useful. So, yeah, they're just some of the resistance ratings I get. Now, if I bring up the ground skills, as you can see, I've got a relatively well rounded character there. Pretty good medic, very good at physiology, not a bad scientist, um, very good at property logistics, particle physics aren't too bad. She's very good with her weapon, 
and she's got very good personal shield generator skills. She's an average person with a willpower, average willpower, and pretty average armor on top of that as well, skill-wise. Now, some of the things to bear in mind are also some of the passive abilities that we get. Uh, as you can see here, I've also done the reputation system as well, although I'm nowhere near completed yet. And if I do the Omega one, at the moment, from the Omega reputation system, I've got the medical nanites, which can generate 20% of my health every 60 seconds in ground combat. I've got a tier 2, the hull repairing nanites, so it generates 10% of my hull every 60 seconds in space combat. At tier 3 passives, I picked the rotating weapon frequency, really useful ability this one. Basically means your weapons um, hold out much, much better before you have to end up clicking the old refrequency uh, modulator to modulate your weapons. At tier 4, I decided to go for the superior shield strength, which actually doesn't give you a proper figure here unless you're in space, but it basically increases your shield regeneration rate. And obviously when I do hit tier 5, I'll get the standard medical nanite cloud as well. Now, on the Romulus reputation system, I've only got as far as in the tier 2, I haven't quite made tier 3 yet. Uh, my choices for tier 1 when you enhance personal shield, so it enhances my personal shield skills by 30. And then my enhanced shield systems was my tier 2 choice, so it increases your shield system skill by 30. When I get to tier 3, I will most likely pick up the uh, reactive shielding. And then when I get to tier 4, I'm considering either going for engineering, emergency engine secondary healing, yeah, get the words out. Emergency secondary shield shielding, which gives you a 20% chance to regain shields. Or I may actually do the sensor targeting assault, which will actually break a target to lock onto me. It's a 20% chance. That one's in the air at the moment, which ability I'll go for at tier 4. I haven't quite decided yet. And then finally, when I do hit tier 5, I'll get the quantum singularity manipulation as well. So, yeah, that's part of my spec of how my character is. Um, let's quick look around our starbase. So, I hope this video has been of use to you. As I said, this guide's always been just how my character is specced. It's uh, not how you must build your character in this way, but just a hopefully a helpful guide for you. So, I hope you enjoyed this final part. Uh, there may be one more bonus video to come with some combat footage of the ship. I should, I think, believe in my next video, I will most likely finally get going on the KDF side. I'm hopefully going on doing a bird of prey, I think, as well as a raptor. And then I might go back to doing my take on a region class vessel after that. So, yeah, I hope that's been of use to you, and I'll look forward to speaking to you again in the next video. Thank you. Good night.